I'm sure it's nothing you don't like Hey boys, what's going on? It's your boy Colasso here today, guys. And today I'm bringing you the uh, recap of my Zendo game. And I want to show you guys something real quick. I played Zendo a lot, and I lost a lot. I had one random win in here from rank that I accidentally clicked on instead of the boss fight. But anyways, yeah, as you guys see, I was getting wrecked by Zendo. Ready? Wrecked. Wrecked again. I was getting wrecked for a long time, but uh, I finally tried a new deck. I tried a Song Eye deck, and you know what? It worked very well, and I'm going to show you the match. But before we do that, I want to show you guys the deck list. I'm going to take my camera off for a minute because I don't want to throw it in the other corner. That takes too long. So uh, we're going to disable that real quick, and I I'm going to bring you guys to the Song Eye list that I made. Now, the Song Eye list I made is Kalios, and the reason I run Kalios is because I like him over Reva for, for this matchup because of his Bloodborne spell. Zendo likes to take his mini minions and hide them in the corner. That way his, uh, his, like, force field shield stays on. Or his, um, he can't be hit by, he can't take damage while he has a minion on the field, basically. So, um, so I'm running Kalios just to get those minions out the way. And we're also running Geomancer to, to change his Bloodborne spell if I don't need it. Um, so we're running three inner focuses. What, no, what do I need to say about it? It's a key card. It lets you reactivate a lot of your minions to clear his board because keeping his board clear is priority. We're running three juxtapositions. Now this card is very strong in this matchup because your, your general moves as a battle pet and that sucks. So Jux allows you to take his minions and put them you know, switch them around with your minions, throw them behind you so your general doesn't have to move forward and risk getting hit by Zendo. So Jux is really nice in that sense. Three Mist Dragon Seals, that just allows us to move around our ranged minions a lot. Plus, sometimes that plus one plus one just helps get the kill. Three Chakris, because we're running a ton of spells in the deck. We're running 18 spells, so you can get your Chakri avatars pretty big. Uh, three Death Strike Steel. Now, this card's key in this matchup. Death Strike Steel allows you to kill off a lot of the big minions that he plays. It lets you kill off everything in one hit. We're running a ton of range units, so Death Strike Steel is awesome for this matchup. Running, uh, three Saber Spine Seals just for the damage. Like I said, we want to put out as much damage as we can. Keep his board clear and hopefully kill him off before he kills off Kalios, uh, because Kalios is an idiot because he's a battle pet. Uh, we're running two Battle Pandos, because Battle Pando works very well with Death Strike Seal, lets you clear all his minions off the board if you can get the combo to stick, and it's really nice to have. Three Keeble Holders, now Keeble Holders is really good in this matchup, because it allows you to, um, to make an enemy not be able to move for a turn, which is super strong, because, because sometimes you need that just to stay alive, so Keeble Holder is great in this matchup, he works with Inner Focus, you can kill, uh, Killing Edge him, you know, there's so many things you can do with Keeble Holder, and, and being cheap range unit is awesome. You can play him, you know, starting the game, you can play Keeble Holder, which is awesome. Running three Killing Edges, what do I need to say? Damage is damage, and that puts out a ton of damage. Three Widowmakers, like I said, we're running a lot of range units uh, because we want to kill off his units, and we don't want our units next to him. We're running three Spell Jammers for the draw. We're running three Geomancers. Geomancer is pretty strong, and the Phoenix Fires are really nice to have. That way I don't have to add the Phoenix Fires to the actual deck. And this gives me a strong body right in case he wants to run his uh, Yuans into this. We're, and uh, we're running one Onyx Jaguar. You could put in two if you want. I feel like one was all I needed. Um, you know, it's only good if you have other minions on the board. And if you don't, he's kind of useless. We're running one Grandmaster Zendo for the memes just because he's Grandmaster Zendo. I'm running two Grove Lines now. This card is key. If you don't have Grove Line, you need to craft at least one or two to fight this boss. Because Grove Line will save your ass this entire match. I don't know how people beat this without Grove Line. Grove Line saved me in my match. Uh, so, 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 so much. Okay, so let's hop into the actual game. Now, uh, I'm actually going to throw back on my camera, my corner cam little thing. And, uh, yeah. We're gonna go to profile, match history, replay, Chicago Zendo. Now I actually didn't explain what he did, uh, so when we get in here, I'm gonna pause it to show you guys. Uh, so in our starting hand, we got a Grove Lion and a Grandmaster Zendo and a Geomancer. Uh, that's something I don't wanna see. This is something I wanna see in our hand. But first off, let me pause it. And let me show you Grandmaster Zendo. One, he is the dopest looking card art ever, and I wish they, they gave us this skin to buy, because I would buy it in a heartbeat. Two, 
He's a 620. Okay, he's a 620. He doesn't start at 25 health, which is nice, but he has 6 attack. Uh, his ability is the enemy general moves and attacks as if they are battle pets, just like normal Grandmaster Zendo. And he has damage immunity, takes no damage. And as you guys see right now, it doesn't say one, but every the more creatures he puts on the field, like here, we'll, we'll go through this. Uh, it, it'll stack up and say damage immunity 2, 3, 4, blah, blah, blah. So right now he has damage immunity times 2. So basically you have to kill off his minions to take off his damage immunity. So, uh, like I said, we're a battle pet, so we're going to move up. And my play here is uh, I wanted to play Battle Pando because I want to get the Battle Pando, Battle Pando Death Strike Seal combo online. But I didn't want to play it here because I didn't want my general... Um, I didn't want this taking damage, basically. I wanted this to live as long as I possibly can. He played a Night Watcher, which is a pain. Um, but that's fine because we were actually on the Shadow Creep, so we got to uh, kill off this anyway. This is moving real quick. Let me pause it real quick. All right, so I know that was moving really quick. The ooze hit me. Uh, the Shadow Creep spawned on top of my Battle Pando, which triggered my Battle Pando, which killed off the ooze. Now, my general moved up, hit the Night Watcher, and this this is allowing me to move over and play my Spelljammer. And the reason I'm playing my Spelljammer here is just so I, my Kalios doesn't come this way and go this way if I somehow kill the Night Watcher. Let me show you. There's the spell jammer, and, and I opted not to hit because I just want—I didn't want this to kill off um, my my battle pando, and it did. I wanted—I wanted to do the combo, but I didn't think it was worth doing it, so I just held on to the death strike seal. I didn't think it was worth it. He plays the Kaido Assassin behind me, which is fine. He also plays a Void Hunter, which is also fine. The fact that he's playing all his minions behind me is actually really nice because that means my Kalios isn't running forwards at him and doing a ton of damage. Uh, I definitely opt to take out the Night Watcher. I don't want to keep the Force Field on board. And uh, since we're since we're right at curve, I just decide to play the Geomancer because I feel like at this point I'd rather have the Phoenix Fire than the Blink. So the Phoenix Fire is actually going to come in clutch like a lot. Throughout this whole game, you guys are going to see Phoenix Fire come in clutch. He does opt to trade here, which is really nice. I get rid of the four attack minion I don't have to worry about. Unfortunately, that does leave me getting backstabbed by the Kaido Assassin. But it's okay. It's okay. We can still kill it off. It, it, it's not that bad because it still prevents Kalios from moving this way. Now, Quartermaster, that's something that's an issue for us, right? Quartermaster is an issue for us because if we didn't, if we didn't draw... This, uh, if we didn't have Phoenix Fire in our Bloodborne spell, we wouldn't be able to kill him because we don't have anything that would be able to kill him because he doesn't take any damage from minions or generals. So, the first thing I thought about is killing him off with the Phoenix Fire because I think that's the only thing we could do, right? We also are holding on to a Grove line, which is really nice in this. Then I decided to move the chat, uh, this Bell Jammer up, kill him off, and play, uh, play one keyboard holder to try to get some range units on the board. I also decided to miss Dragon Steel this here to prevent my general from moving as far this way as possible. This way he only moves over one space instead of two because I still want to keep him away from Chicago. Zendo, Zendo can do a lot of damage right now, man. So that's why I used that's why I opted to play the Miss Dragon Steel the way I did. He does play another quarter master, which is okay, because we can eventually deal with it. We actually have the Phoenix Fire again, which is what we're going to do. We're going to Phoenix Fire that one off. We also have Death Strike Seal now, and I think we actually played the Death Strike Seal. We do. We play it on the Keeper Holder. Uh, we go we go that, we hit him, we go Inner Focus, and then we go Killing Edge, which is pretty good because it allows us to clear his board and do a ton of damage on Zendo this turn. And it puts our threat back in a corner. That's kind of hard for him to deal with unless he draws like a... Uh, a, uh, a removal spell to, to kill it off, like an Onyx Bear Seal. So, 7 damage on a, on a turn is pretty strong. He opts to play another Kato Assassin, which is actually really good, because if he keeps playing these, these really weak cards, it's easy for us to uh, kill him off. Now, in your guys' matchup, something that I want to warn you about, uh, I did pause it. It's still going, the animations are still going. Uh, he likes to play Ash Method, and when he plays them, he normally doesn't play aggressive with them. Like I said, he wants to keep minions on board. So he actually opts to take the Ash uh, Methods and, and run them away from your 
from everything, basically. He just wanted to keep them as live as, as much as possible. So let's keep playing. Now, this turn I really wanted to get my Grove line on board. So I go, I take out this one with the Kiva holder because I don't want it behind me. I opt to play the Grove line. I play it back here. I take the spell jammer, trade it there. And uh yeah, we call that a turn. We call that a turn. He moves that backwards, like I told you, he likes to run them away. And he moves that one backwards, just like I told you guys. He likes to run them away. He wants to keep minions on board, which is actually strong for us. Because, like I said, we have force field. Now, this is where he actually messed up, in my opinion. And I'll tell you why. Let, let, me, let me pause it real quick again. Now, Fire Blazer worked very well for us. Because since we have Provoke on, uh, we're just going to sit here and keep fighting this Fire Blazer and taking no damage. As long as I deal with the rest of his board... This Fire Blazer is just buying me time to find a, uh, a win condition, basically. Which is which is what I do. I could kill the Fire Blazer off easily, right? We have a 7-4 Keeble Holder, right? But I actually choose not to. The reason the reason is, like I said, I, I want to milk it as much as possible. So we're going to play the Keeble Holder here and make sure this guy can't move. That way he can't come up here and attack me while I don't have my Force Field on. I want to Phoenix Fire this because I want to get rid of his range unit. And then I take the 7-4 and I hit the 2-1. This way, this way my force field is safe, right? My force field is safe. I, uh, I have two 7-4s on the field because I didn't want to waste uh, any mana. So I just played the Killing Edge on the other people holder, giving me more super ranged units. He can hit me with the Ash Method. You know, we're looking pretty strong here. Night Watcher is a pain, and he's starting to flood the board around me, but we have... We have quite a few range units on board to where I can almost take care of almost every threat he plays. Like I said, we're just going to keep milking this, this Fire Blazer as much as possible. So we're going to play another Keeble Holder and we're going we're gonna to do the same thing and we're going to make sure that Ash Method doesn't move. We're going to take, uh, yeah, we're going to take the 7-4, hit him. We're going to take this 7-4, hit that again. And we're going to take the Phoenix Fire and kill off the Nasher. We do take a little bit of damage here, but it was necessary. It had to be done. Uh, we're also going to play the Widowmaker, because I want to develop as many ranged threats as possible. As you guys see, our ranged threats back here are stacked. Stacked. And this is our last turn that we're actually able to uh, milk this Fire Blazer. Alright, I don't, I don't remember if he hits me or not. I don't Actually, I don't think he hits me. I don't think he, he does play the Saber Spine Tiger. He doesn't do anything with it, but you know, it's on the board. It's on the board. There's a Chaos Elemental, so he's starting to flood the board, right? At this point, I'm like, can I win this turn? We have a bunch of range units on board. We 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 milked the Fire Blazer as long as possible, and then we drew the Onyx Jaguar, the one of them that we have in the deck. So obviously we're gonna get the buffs off of everything. I'm gonna move all my units at least one space to get a plus one. My phone's blowing up right now. Uh, I, I normally don't like attacking things with the Grove line, but I need to clear the board and, and have as many units up as possible. At this point, I'm just looking to see what can kill what without me wasting my eight fives. So that's what we're gonna do, man. We're just gonna clear the board of all his threats, leaving us two eight fives that hit him in the face, which is beautiful, which is absolutely beautiful. Oh man, I can't wait to watch this replay. After losing to uh, Chicago Zendo, uh, you know, how many times did we lose against them? 22? Uh, this Kaleos deck w worked beautifully, man. It, it worked great, and, and I really enjoyed playing him. Um, you know, another another thing I would suggest to you guys would be to buy Silhouette Tracer. A lot of people were posting on the forums that Silhouette Tracer is really nice because it allows you to move your general backwards, so keep that in mind. But anyways, guys, yeah, uh, let me buy a key, and, uh, we'll open up the, the, the mystery crate. I kind of already did it. I did that part first, because I re-recorded this part. So, yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoy the mystery crate. If you do, um, let me know. Let me know. Comment down below. But, yeah, I'll see you guys in the opening. Alrighty, bullies, so I bought the key, so let's open up our, um, let's open up our mystery crate. Let's open her up. Let's see what we get. Let's unlock our boss crate. I love unlocking boss crates. There's just something about them. I just like them a lot. We got a gauntlet ticket. We got a spirit orb. Spirit orb. Um, tusk boar, which I really don't want. Spirit orb and common crate key. 
Moving up to common crate. Lock her up. Come on, I want some good emotes. That's what I want. I don't care about the cards. Profile icon and profile icon. Alright, I'll take profile icons. Um, what else did we get? We just got... Oh, we got orbs. Orbs, orbs, guys. Alright, let's open up these orbs. I mean, I think I have almost everything in Shimzar, so... At this point, it's just gonna be in it for the... For the legendary, so I can disenchant them. Because disenchanting them allows me to get other good legendaries that I want. Lurking Fear, Soboro. Uh, don't need either of those. Vesperate Call, don't need that. I already have three of them. Last but not least, uh, nothing good. Nothing good. Anyways, guys, uh, that's really it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up, let me know, and comment down below. Let me know if you guys see anything that I may have missed or anything like that. But as always, I'm your boy Colazzo. Hope you guys keep on dueling, and I will see you guys next time.